All right, here's an update on the backfield, which I did not get a fence on. Up here, I, I increased the size of it, and you can see it's just stinking weeds. It's just weeds and grass. Like, like here's little tiny soybeans. Like everywhere I go, the dogs are going to lean over with me. But uh, the deer, here's a soybean here. But the deer have been mowing this. I got cameras. They're just coming out. It's turning it back into grass. There are soybeans here. I'm going to spread some fertilizer on this. And then I'm going to come back with the Roundup because these are Roundup ready. And you can see this is all supposed to, there's a big patch of grass right here. It's all supposed to be soybeans here all the way down to the clover. But the bottom down there, the buckwheat did surprisingly well. And I just think that's because if you have soybeans, the deer are just going to eat the soybeans without a, without a fence. They're, they're just mowing them down. I can see them all nipped off here. I mean, there's a lot. There's a lot of soybeans. And if I can fertilize them and like you, you can see that was a pretty good stalk right there. And they, they mowed it off. But the buckwheat down here is coming up pretty good. This is the area, all the new area that I thought wouldn't do good. That was all weeds. I mowed it and started off fresh. And that buckwheat's doing really good. I wish it was taller. I wish it was taller, but we haven't had rain. Since I planted this, it rained once. It's been a month, about five weeks, I guess. And it might have rained twice, maybe three times in that whole time. It wasn't really like a good soaking rain. It's been pretty dry here. But I'm going to try to salvage this field what we can since I got a couple bags of fertilizer. I got the big spreader here. I mean, the soybeans are nice, but they're probably up six to eight inches here without much rain and with mowing pressure. We might be able to save some of them. All right, here's my two bags. I'm just gonna put two bags on this field, a triple 19. And I spread it on my other field with my chest spreader. And as soon as I started spreading, the wind was blowing and I could feel that stuff just burning me up, man. This stuff is no joke. I got this right from a farm, a farm store instead of like a tractor supply. This stuff is straight chemicals. Like, you, I, so I was like, I can't even, I, you can't spread this on your chest with a chest spreader. It, I had to pull out the, a big spreader for this did you close it yeah so i'm gonna try to use this and let it come out as light as possible and drive around here like when i'm pouring this i could actually taste it already like in the air and just breathing with my nose, it's like chlorine. I could smell it. This stuff is like, seems to be really powerful.
Here's the fruit trees and the blackberries I planted. It actually has some berries on it and it's starting some new shoots there. Which is, the new shoots are more important than the stalk that I just planted because this is going to die this year. All these stalks will die and then new ones will come up. That's what I'm waiting for. This is the Glimmer Christmas Pear Tree. Doing well. Got some nice new growth. I just weed whacked all this yesterday. The weeds were taller. The grass around these cages was taller than the actual trees because uh, the last time I was here, I didn't have time to weed whack. So I just mowed around them. And inside these cages was a wall of grass. Looked like, not even that. Looked like this right here. A wall of grass inside the cages. And then uh, yesterday I actually had the time to to lift the cages off and weed whack. Now this is this this pear tree here, half of it died. The top would turn brown and died off. I mean the rest of it looks good, but that whole top branch right there just just died and I snapped it off in case it had disease. I should probably cut it. Some apples there, that one's doing good. That's the Granny Smith. And let's see, the smallest ones is the ones I was worried about. Look, when you leave your grass too high, look what happens. When the grass is as high as the tree, the grasshoppers and caterpillars start to eat your tree. So you got to have it cleared off so nothing gets to it. But these were the smallest ones. These were the crabapple trees. And, of course, same thing, the grasshoppers and crickets and bugs were having a field day with it. But... I think I caught it in time. If I would have let it go probably another week, they would have ate every stinking leaf off of these little trees and they would have been done. The worst two trees are the last two I planted. Um, cherry trees. The two cherry trees look terrible. They look terrible. There's some green leaves on there, but just terrible. And I can tell you that these two got shipped to me bare root. They were bare root and there wasn't much hair root on it at all and they're the worst but all the other trees that came from i think it was, was the wildlife group i think i got them from they had such nice roots on them and they all even with me not weed whacking they still are doing good so i think they're going to be all right and here's an update on the food plot you can see the strip of buckwheat right up the middle with the white flowers. It all came up really nice. This is like a mix of soybeans. This is where I was loading the, the um, spreader. So this is the thickest right here. Look how thick these soybeans are right here. It's crazy. But let's take a quick walk here. I mean, it's... These suckers are doing good. This electric fence, the difference between this field and the backfield where the deer had access to it is night and day. I mean, night and day. And this is on a hill. This is a dry, look how dry the ground is. It's just, it's just cracked. It's, it's so stinking dry. And these are still growing. I would say they're probably only six to eight inches tall right now. Uh, they were planted about five weeks ago and it might have rained twice. That's it, maybe three times, I don't know. But not, not, not a nice good soaking rain for sure that it really needs, especially being on this hill. There's some uh, bald spots in there. Like right there's a bald spot and there's like a little little patch of weeds there little patch of grass there no. and I see a patch of grass no. up there no more than three feet and that's it the rest is plants baby no. I mean, it's, and this is just, just done with a chain drag. I mean, up there, it looks good. Like right in the center, right next to buckwheat is like where it's the driest. 
I think, and that's right after I planted, we had a really hard rain, and I think some of them seeds got moved from this from the real bad rain right after I planted it. But uh, man, just with the chain drag and just hand broadcasting, this stuff is it's really worked. And the electric fence, I would recommend electric fence around here. This is two acres, man. I I fenced in all the way down, all the way, two acres. And uh, he's gonna get zapped. But it's definitely saved it because the deer come out around the, they know now the deer come out. There's been a couple that's been, I got a camera over here, a couple of deer that have gotten in and you can see on the pictures, they're like standing there and then they start like, peril, peril. they're trying to get out of there because they got zapped. So that's kind of funny. But they, they're definitely walking around it. I can see them walking around it now. Look how nice this buckwheat is growing here. Look at this. I wish the whole thing would be... This is like two, a two-foot high patch right here. And there's a cor stinking corn seed stalk coming up. But it's just so dry. Man, if we would have had, look at the ground. I mean, it's just cracked. It, the whole field is just dry and cracked. But we got beans all the way down, baby. Yes. I think we're going to be all right. <laughs>